Hello everyone and welcome to another Game Stuff video. It is the first video of 2022. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go just shortly cover some of the things that have been happening the most. Uh, or have been talked the most rather in the industry. Uh, of course, we'll start with Battlefield 2042, which has been bleeding pow uh, players, powers, <laughs> has been bleeding players since release. To a point that during Christmas and New Year, Battlefield uh, 5, which in itself it wasn't one of the greatest Battlefields ever, uh, had more players uh, playing the game than Battlefield 2042, and even got to a point where Battlefield 1 was approaching those numbers too. And if memory serves me right, I think I came across somewhere on it was a specific 24 hour period where Battlefield 1 did actually uh, surpass. Battlefield 2042, which is just a mess of a game. Um, even Steam has issued refunds to players that have gone past the two hour grace period because the game is just so broken. And it's just really bad from EA again, and it's terrible from DICE. Because the way I look at this personally is DICE has killed the uh, Medal of Honor franchise. They have pretty much ruined Star Wars Battlefront to the ground and now they're doing the same with Bat with Battlefield which it is it, it's it's unbelievable really how can EA and DICE just screw up so badly across these franchises simple features on first person shooters they, they, they're just not there and things like chat when when you're playing with teammates it, it doesn't exist or it's broken like it's been broken since the Medal of Honor uh, days I just don't understand how they do this so um, I, I'm happy that the game fails and I, I hope it's pretty much dead very soon because they really need need to turn things around they need to realize that it, it, they can't keep making the, the sweet money that they want to by releasing a complete shite of games that's what I'm going to call them. My my hope at this point, which is probably not going to happen, is that uh, Sony, assuming they even have the money, uh, buys EA and actually brings the uh, this first-person shooters to a level that they should be on, not the crap that has been released by DICE in in uh, in recent years. So um, yeah, it's a game that I, I definitely, regardless of how fixed it gets, probably one of the games that I'll never play, even when it comes for free on PlayStation Plus or Xbox or whatever. Because to be honest, there are better fields previous to that that I'd rather play than that one. Uh, it, it looks so bad all this time since release, and it's still so unbelievably broken. I think recently, uh, perhaps last week, they have released uh, the. Um, the scoreboard so so hey there's a scoreboard in the game now in a competitive shooter amazing uh, which is still uh, far behind previous scoreboards but it's a it's a step in the right direction i suppose so moving on from ea's battlefield chaos we've got a thing that everyone is talking about uh, at the moment because this just happened a few days ago i i, I knew about it uh, a couple of hours after after it happened, I, I thought about doing a video about it then, but you know, I was tired from work and all that, so I couldn't really do that. Plus, chasing clicks is not something that I that I'm known for, so there's that. But uh, Microsoft, Microsoft and Xbox, obviously same company, uh, are dishing out. Uh, well, you know, they they've got pocket money to spare. Uh, over 68 billion dollars to acquire Activision Blizzard and uh, King is part of the deal as well which is really weird because they now and things like Crash Bandicoot which for many many years was uh, associated uh, with PlayStation and and now it's gonna be uh, an Xbox title possibly even an exclusive Xbox title more than likely to be entirely honest um, so yeah, that was uh, announced early last week, nearly $70 billion. It is crazy to think the list of IPs that uh, Microsoft will in effect now own. 
which uh, well, this this article is from Video Games Chronicle, and uh, Blur says uh, Call of Duty is now owned by Microsoft Xbox, Candy Crush, Crash Bandicoot, Diablo, DJ Aero, Empire Rare. I mean, just that alone, just the amount of titles and sales that are on those games. Uh, Gabriel Knight, Geometry Wars, Guitar Hero, so we might see this game making a comeback, hopefully. Uh, Gun, Gun, uh, Earthstone, Heroes of the Storm, and two nice titles there that hopefully Microsoft will look good things with. XN, Interstate 76, King's Quest, Loud About Mysteries, The Lost Vikings, Overwatch, another big title there. Phantasmagoria, Pitfall, Police Quest, Prototype. Will be nice to see this uh, being brought back from the dead. I did like the prototype games. Quest for Glory, Singularity, Skylanders, Solid of, for yeah, Solid of Fortune, Space Quest, Spyro the Dragon. It's a <laughs> it's a really fun game. Um, Starcraft, Tenchu, Time Shift, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, True Crime, World of Warcraft, and Zork. Absolute, absolutely insane. A lot of titles here that have been dormant, that Activision has not done anything with for several years. Hopefully they'll now have the resources to to visit them. It's absolutely crazy. So this is going to bring, according to uh, VGC here, will bring the first party uh, studios from Microsoft to about uh, to 30 of them. Uh, adding things like Infinity Wood, Robin uh, Software, Sledgehammer Games, Toys for Bob, and uh, Treyarch. And this is is funny because uh, up until very recently we've always been saying that uh, one of the things that Xbox lacked was having major titles. I mean they have Halo, they've got the Forza series of course, and uh, Gears of War I think was the other one. This now changes the game uh, completely. This definitely puts um, Xbox in a very good position going forward. And obviously the Candy Crush Maker King, uh, I did mention earlier on, is also on a deal. This does raise a lot of questions, whether it's um, antitrust or in general what will happen in the future in terms of uh, exclusivity. Titles that are cross-platform with uh, millions of players on both, like Call of Duty, is obviously one of the games that everyone is talking about. Will be interesting to see what happens uh, with the title. I mean, same for Overwatch and some of the others. Only time will tell. I'm not too worried uh, for as long as Phil Spencer is running Xbox. I think he will skip some games uh, cross-platform still obviously they'll try to get some exclusives because you don't just throw 70 billion and, and not try to get a return on that by increasing your uh, your player base or your subscription or the, the subscription to your service so of course we can expect some uh, exclusivity there some time exclusivities for the very least um, but yes, we. What I'm worried about more going forward is when somebody else is in charge. You know, these companies, as they change over the years with new personnel, their attitude towards business models and towards the players does shift, and that's my biggest concern. I, I like to think, and certainly it's, it's proven to be the case in many occasions, that that Phil Spencer is um, more in favor of gamers and many other corporations out there. But obviously, he's not going to be in charge forever, and others will come, and he'll go. And when a company like Microsoft will launch so many studios, it does cause me some concerns. But we'll see. Absolutely crazy. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this acquisition. I mean, after running Bethesda, you know, Zenimax Media, and uh, now Activision Blizzard, it is. It's a bit crazy. Moving on to uh, something that did make the headlines a few weeks ago uh, was Final Fantasy XIV, a game that was so successful that it was actually pulled from the store. 
it was pulled from cell and it looks like that is still not back yet as this is a very recent article and they also put on hold the uh, marketing and all that and it's still on hold because uh, following the release of their um, last expansion and walker it's just so many people wanted to play it. i mean it is a great mmo and players were coming from other mmos to play it and the servers could not cope with it so instead of doing what many other games um, game companies will do like activision and like ea and others that will keep selling a, bro a broken product uh, this game was actually pulled so it's it's nice to see i mean final fantasy 14 does have a very good track record of listening to players and being player friendly i forgot the name of um this guy that works for them that everyone talks about in japanese i think that it does he does take things really seriously and he does see players as the most important um, part of the game and keeping players happy which at the end of the day that's what every company should do because you need the players for the game to keep going but others only see dollar signs and then players go away and once there are no players there are no more dollars i don't know i think it's quite obvious for me but maybe it's just me so yeah this little gem is still doing very very well i do watch some people play it every now and then on, on some streams because uh, I don't have time to start another MMO, I can barely play the Elder Scrolls, and it, it's definitely worth uh, the the play base rise that it's been seeing and all the praise that it's been getting for sure. Another thing that we can't get away from in 2022, we'll certainly see a lot more of, is video game companies talking about NFTs. It is just at the moment a scam. A money making uh, what do we call it scheme yeah that every company wants to jump on it's nfts and metaverse that's what we keep hearing so far not a single one of these companies not ea not ubisoft not all the others that have come out talking about um, nfts and the metaverse have shown us anything that will benefit as gamers nothing it's just corporate talk because they want to make money they see this as a way of making money and of course the, the potential is there to make money but no one has actually bothered to explain to gamers or anybody for that matter how it will actually benefit the players there's nothing new in this technology that cannot be implemented now for the things that some of these companies are advertising i mean counter strike has been selling skins for all long you know uh, so um i really don't know where this is going i am very skeptical about this because i know the companies are seeing this as just another way to milk players to monetize something that's all that's all they're going to do um this does give the uh, industry a bit of a grim look going forward in my opinion but hopefully we will have some uh, legit developers out there i mean most of the developers that have come and spoken out they are against this because they see the same as we do they're going to be forced to put certain things in the games that does not benefit the players does not benefit the enjoyment of the game but they're going to have to put it in the game because it makes money and the people in the suits in the offices the executive teams will be forcing them to do that so they don't like it and we don't like it so uh, I, I really don't know where this is going to go but i'm not you know not too happy about that. oh look an example that's something FIFA will definitely be one of the games that will be getting uh, NFTs on their ultimate team and all sorts of other shite. Very interesting. And this article is by Inverse.com, which I'm not actually going to read anything on, but it's <laughs> interesting that it shows um, FIFA there, because, yeah, that's one of the games that is already heavily monetized on uh, Ultimate Team, and it's only going to get worse. Also, Ubisoft, I can't think of anything that they will launch that uh, won't be purely to make the money uh, i think even xbox has mentioned that on the uh, acquisition of activision which won't be finalized probably for several months uh, but it is part of their metaverse and all this going forward so this is something that all the companies are looking at um though phil spencer has actually said uh, it is not that in favor of nfts because he is seeing what everyone else is trying to do which is just to make uh, quick money 
So hopefully some companies will actually make good use of NFTs because well, it'll be nice, it's a new technology and I'm sure it can be used for, uh, for good things in, in, in games, like across many other things. Uh, but we haven't seen any of that yet. So until that happens, I'm not, um, well, I'm gonna stay quite reserved uh, on the matter. And moving on, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep covering the, the free games, uh, to be honest, they seem to be getting worse and worse. But we're here today, so we'll quickly go through them. So if you are a PlayStation Plus member for January 2022, you got Dirt 5, Persona 5 Strikes, and Deep Rock Galactic. Now, personally, the most interesting and fun game seems to be Deep Pro Galactic. It's really well made. Uh, it's just absolutely awesome. It's it's so much fun from what I've seen and also from what I heard. So it's something that I would like to try at some point. So I definitely bought that. Dirt 5, this is not my type of game. Uh, I, I like racing, but I'm more of a track racing like Gran Turismo or the Forza series. Not the Horizon, the other one. I do like Horizon as well. Just like I would have some fun with Dirt 5 for sure. But it's not really my type. But if you do like racing crazy run tracks and things like that, then this is the game for you. It is it's definitely uh, it's definitely worth it. Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, from what I heard, this, this has been well reviewed and well received. Uh, but I'd recommend this to people who have actually played the main Persona 5 game just because of the character development and all that so that you are actually aware. Uh, that's what I've heard recommended as well from others, and it will make sense. I think Persona 5 has got a couple. Uh, it's, got the f it's got this one, Persona 5 Strikers, and there's another spin-off that's come out as well, uh, which is kind of nice. I do like the Persona series. I only played one of the games on the PlayStation Vita, and I loved it. I think, was it Persona 4? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but I've always liked the series anyway, so it's nice to see that there. I did buy it. Not sure I'll ever play it. Uh, but yeah, good to good to have. Another thing that we might be seeing soon is a change to the PlayStation Plus or the PlayStation Now systems, the or subscriptions that Sony's got on. Um, I think it's been called Project Spartacus, is it? So something that might be maybe somewhat similar to Game Pass. Uh, I think Sony's trying to counter that, understandably. But we don't really know much about it. We'll have to wait and see. But now with, with Xbox uh, buying Activision, Sony will definitely be um, sitting around the table, scratching their heads, and what can we do to retain players or to gain new players? Uh, very interesting times ahead. I think for the consumer, it's probably, in a way, it's a good thing, that deal, because we'll make companies do even better. Like, if, if Sony now has to try and think of something to gain players, offer a good deal to, to gamers. And then if they do that and they succeed on that, then you might even see Microsoft, again, making some changes to Game Pass or something like that to try and have, you know, that fight uh, going f uh, backwards and forward between the two of them to try and gain, uh, trying to gain our attention and our money. Ultimately, that's what they're after. So interesting times ahead. Obviously, there are some concerns too. Only time will tell, like I said earlier. We'll have to wait and see. Xbox Live Gold this month, uh, they really are trying to kill the, the, the Live Gold membership, aren't they? Because this is... I mean, it's interesting, it's fun, but not really worth mentioning all that much. Um, but hey, they are for free if you already pay for the Xbox Live Gold. So why not grab them? Uh, I'm not sure if I got a ground yet. Uh, I might have to double check that before I forget. And the one that was finishing uh, on the 15th, I believe I got that one actually. It's a ground that I don't have yet because it wasn't at the time released. So yeah, not much to talk about there. On the Epic Games Store we have at the moment uh, Relic, Relic, yeah, Relic for free. And coming after that from the general from January 27th will be a Demon X Machina which I have seen something about I've not seen anything about uh, Relic, uh, Relic that I'm really struggling to say the name 
but it looks like fun and if you do have the epic launcher then um, and why not hmm Sifu so cool stuff and on Steam nothing worth mentioning on a first page really but there's always discounts going around some nice gems always can be found on Steam and um, we have also had release on both the Epic Game Store and Steam because it is now on PC uh, one of the God of War games as Sony keeps on trying to tap into that market uh, from what I've heard it seems to be a very good port PC players uh, are quite happy with the port the game itself of course is a good game uh, we weren't too sure it was going to work just the way the, the camera uh, works on God of War we weren't too sure if PC players were going to be happy with that or if it would actually work out on PC uh, as well as it, it appeared to on console and so far uh, everyone's happy well everyone I'm sure there's some people complaining but the overwhelming sentiment is that um, it's brilliant definitely worth a, buy, uh, worth a, a buy I believe it was released for 40 pounds so kind of like a full price uh, as it would have been on a PlayStation 4 back then uh, which it's only fair to be honest I've got no issue with the uh, with the pricing on that and um, yeah I think that is going to be all for today I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the series uh, going forward I really don't but I'll try and make a video when I see there's something worth to talk about and something that I don't forget I always forget stuff because I forget to mark it down but um, it is what it is so thank you all for watching and don't forget if you did like the video to leave a like comment and subscribe if you haven't yet because it does really help um, to get my content out and helps me get motivated to do more content so thank you all stay safe and see you on the next one